but not just himself. There are other people linked with him. And um, I don't know if there were cohorts or family to him. Until now, all the spirits that Derek had sent seemed to be benevolent. All this seemed to have changed with the discovery of a mysterious and evil man named Daniel. Perhaps more would be revealed on the upper floors of the manor. It's like as if I've got three movements at times. Energies coming in, moving about. Um... Oh, okay. Is that a name, Sam? Is that a name? How do I pronounce it? Okay, Sam's just, it's not the spirit giving it to me, but Sam has said here to mention the name and I'm just copying what he said, the way he's pronouncing it. Um, okay, it sounds like Loughton. Loughton, Loughton. And Loughton, he said Loughton walks here. Loughton comes in and walks here. And then I get the conditions. It's not just one Loughton. I feel there's a number of them. So there's got to be a family, I feel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if they walk um, this premise and what have you, it means that they must have had presence of living here. Um, again, energies coming here of children. Right. They move about. Um, the lovely lady who I talked earlier about, she also has at times of coming here. Mm -hmm. Um, this is not uh, just residual energy. Mm. There is activity here. Right. And that activity can show itself in many ways. Right. Um, uh, albeit, you know, noises. Again, I feel because of three mixtures, there would be a manifestation at times of a spirit shape. Is it coming to your back again? Yeah. It's probably this negative soul that's... Oh, gosh. I just get the feeling that would be... It's going to open. It's going to open up here, and maybe we've got more than one to contend with. Are you able to sort of tell us when perhaps the last um, activity happened here? God. How strong is the sort of energies remaining from the last activity? Something could have happened up to as, as little back as okay. I don't know, 1970s, mm -hmm. 1980s. Um, I feel stuff has, has happened f even from then. Right. Can I suggest that we, we we actually go to night vision now? Yeah. Would I, that I be mean, a good idea? I think so, yes. Yeah? Yeah. You're right. Yeah, yeah I'm fine. I just, it just comes and goes, and I've had no problem yeah. at all. But when we get into a, a certain area in this building, I feel that's where <sighs> there'll be... There could be even stronger. If this individual and cohorts wish to do it... Um, we should get a warning quite quickly. After Derek's warning, we were all apprehensive about the night ahead. Would the most haunted crew encounter something paranormal? And if so, how would they cope? What's that? As usual, the crew had split up into small groups so we could cover the building more effectively. Many hours were spent waiting patiently for something, anything to happen. All was quiet on the monitors and our patience was wearing thin. We all wanted something to happen. To hopefully induce a paranormal occurrence, we called in another psychic, Ian Lawman. It would also be interesting to see if Ian could pick up on the same spirits as Derek. We asked him to go into the attic room with Carl, Stuart, myself. And on this occasion, we had a four-legged addition to the crew in the shape of the owner's dog. Is there actually another room through there? Yes. It's an attic. And there's no room in it? Yeah. No, it, well, it's, it's, it's an attic space. That's up here. Yeah. <clears throat> well, no one else should be up here. There's no one else up here. That was like a, a cry. Yeah, it was a cry. God, I hope we got that on, because if we both heard it. I heard that as well before. I did. I, I thought it was that. a cat. I thought it 
thought it was a cat. Don't, don't know anything. Spirit within this room, please give us a sign. I'm asking you to give us a sign, give us a noise, to let us know you're in this room with us. You're not going to move out of space until you make a noise. So you, Stuart? No. I'm asking for you to give us a sign. Is that you, Stuart? No, I'm not moving. Sorry. Something's moving over there. He's getting angry. Can you feel the adrenaline? I've got such a headache. I've got to say, I've got, got a headache. Yeah, he's getting, he's getting angry. Stuart, please give us a sign. Stuart, please give us a sign. Stuart, please move away from that. What is that? It's coming from behind me, whatever yeah, it, it is. is. Wow. Come on, that's rubbish. Give us something better than that. Are you going to do something? We need to know that you are here. Where are you? Behind Stuart. How do you feel, Carl? Oh, oh heck. I heard that. What's the matter? It's the dog. Yeah, he wasn't happy though, he squealed. We were convinced that we could hear tapping and creaking noises coming from the area of the door between the attic rooms. It was almost as if an invisible presence was standing there. Despite our growing fear, we moved forward to investigate. Oh, shit. What? Oh, you are joking me. What's the matter? Something just hit me. Well, something flew. Something I hit heard me. it. Something hit me right on the back. I heard it. Go on back it, in. It's basically like, now you're out. Get out. It seemed that Carl had been hit hard on the back of the neck by a book. With such apparent poltergeist activity taking place, we could only helplessly stand by as the strange noises continued. How do you feel like that? I feel very, uh, I feel nervous. Because there's something definite. It's just pitching us, that's what it is. Closer. Closer. 